and Brad, the two most famous physical therapists on the internet. Hi, folks. I'm Bob Schultz, physical therapist. Brad Heineck, physical therapist. Yeah, there we are, the most famous physical therapist on the internet. In our opinion, it still of course, stinks, Bob. Brad. We're sticking up the whole, whole I place. I use here. my odor. Four Either. simple tests you must do before you transition to minimalist running. That's forefoot or barefoot. And by the way, I think these tests are important to you for even if you aren't a runner. Sure. Because these are th this is the type of range of motion and strength you should have in your in your foot. I don't. I'm not there yet, and I'm having trouble with my balance. Per particularly if you're 50 and older, because your balance starts to weaken up, and this is specifically it can be a big part of your problem. By the way, if new to our channel, ah. please take a second to subscribe to us. We provide videos on stay healthy, fit, pain free, and we upload every day. Also, go to Bob and Brad, our website. Uh, we're always giving something away. What it is, we don't know because it's the future. Uh -huh. We're going to go to the future. Where, where This is made for the future. Uh, go to the giveaway section Ooh. or go to Bob and Brad on Facebook. It'll be pinned at the top of the page. Shorter version of us. Go to Twitter or Instagram, a 60-second version of our program every day. All right, Brad, take it away. What are well, these tests that we're going to do? Well, Bob, we want to assess. Like I said, as therapists, uh, there's some mechanical, biomechanical things that can happen to your foot over time that will either be loss of range of motion or weak muscles that are going to affect your ability to be a four foot runner or a barefoot runner is very similar. And a lot of it has to do with strength in your muscles controlling your big toe, range of motion of your big toe, uh, as well as range of motion in your ankles. And then we're going to test strength too. So four gotcha. simple tests. The first one, uh, you don't have to have a board like this, but we thought you could see our feet better on here. So you get in the 90-90 position, and if you're a therapist, you know that. If not, you want to get your knee at a 90 degrees and your hip at a 90 degrees. So I'm a little bit below probably yeah. on that. But yeah, yeah, Bob's on a stool. So okay. his is an example of not. You can see his knee's pretty high, but it'll still work for this. Sure. Uh, so you want to ideally get that 90-90 position. Okay, and the first one is keep your foot flat on the floor. Best to do this on a hard floor, not carpet. And slide your hips forward on the chair until you're, well. Yeah, you want a plumb line. Yep. So a vertical line from your toe, you should be able to slide your knee past that plumb line with your heel still, still, still maintaining down. contact. If you do this and you slide forward and by the time you get there, your heel comes off and your heel cord and calf muscle is so tight it does not allow you to get down, you're gonna have to work on stretching them heel cords out so you gain that range of motion before you start four foot running. Again, important, I would say even if you're a walker or just a, a regular human being, I think it's an important thing. I work on this one a lot. I'm, I'm good at that one. Sure. Yeah. I, I pointed that out because I'm not good at some of these other ones. So. Well, that's a good point, Bob. This is for four-foot running. But if you're that, that is one that you yeah. should work on even if you're not good. Yeah, you want to have uh, ankles that are going to move. Otherwise, you're going to have problems even with walking. Right. As life goes on, you may, be a, you may end up being uh, dragging your toe. You yeah, know? yeah, yeah. So when you walk. So next one, uh, range of motion of your big toe. Now, the big toe is really important for balance, and it also has to do with uh, when you swing your foot through, your, your foot pulls up, we call it dorsiflexion, but your toes have to also dorsiflex. So we're gonna look, we need 30 degrees of extension. Now, here we got a little baby goniometer, and right there it's set at 30 degrees upwards. That means your big toe or great toe technically should extend up at least 30 degrees. Now, both Bob and I, I mean, I can pull my yeah. toes up actively easily, but there are some people can only lift their toe up a little bit and you need to be able to get it way up or 30 degrees is about, you know, you should be able to get one or two fingers underneath your toe. Yeah. To and this the is, they, you are allowed to pull it up. Yeah. You, you passive gotta, range. Okay. And uh, I, Brad and I were talking before the video, I, I can go to people that have plantar fasciitis mm -hmm. and very often the foot that they have plantar, fasciita, fa, fas, plantar fasciitis on, that toe is tighter than the other side. Sure. This side will go way up and this side might not even go up at all because right. that flat fascia goes right up into the toe yes. and it's quite often tight yep. on people. So if you do have a, a tight, great toe that doesn't come up high, you're probably more at risk for plantar fasciitis. Yeah, and that's why we recommend the, the stretch that we have people do is grab the forefoot like this 
and pull the toes and stretch the, the fascia at the same time. Right. Yep. It's so, a nice, simple little stretch. Do it um, before you get out of bed. Right. Okay. Now, the next one, this one's an interesting one, is... Yeah, I found this interesting. <laughs> I'll show with both feet, but initially, okay. uh, you want to have your big toe and your heel completely flat, and then your big toe flat, and then lift up your other toes. Um, what do we call that big toe, the pinky one, go, one's going to yeah, the market. Right, all, right. Anyways. Wee, 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 all the way on. Yeah. So we want to lift those toes up and then push down with your great toe into the floor while these toes stay up. If you push down and those toes have to curl down, that means that your great toe, your big toe is weak and your smaller toes are compensating by helping it by curl down. Bob has a good example yep, of this. I'm, I've got apparently a weak toe because look what my toes are doing. They're curling right up there, you know, the hammer toes basically. Right. Yep. And I think I do have a, a weak big toe. Yeah, I, I, I and it affects my balance, and that's why I'm going to be working on this. So yeah, now like I'm able to keep my toes quite high up, and I'm pushing down with my great toe. I have a little bit of flexion, but it's not like that. I'm really not. And you can see these tendons kind of flare out a little bit more when yeah. you have to do that. So that's very interesting to you know. Yeah, is, to find out this has yeah. uh, been uh, revealing to yep. me. Yep, that big toe has a lot to do with balancing, walking as well as running. And finally, but not leastly. <laughs> this one is this one's the easiest one I think to do is for you it is you know you're gonna do this barefoot and you're gonna flatten your foot on the ground so your heel everything is flat and get a clock or your cell phone set it for 30 seconds and see if you can stand on one leg for 30 seconds see, look how bad I am well, he's six and a half foot tall too. I think that has. Yeah, a and I have high arches, and yeah. I've been working. I mean, this was worse a couple of weeks ago, Brad. Sure. I mean, I, I was going like this. Yep. And I, I've been working on my arch strength, and it's been helping, but I'm still not there. Yep. Now, if you make sure you compare both sides, if you what I do when I test people, if they have to touch with a hand or the foot, I count how many times they have to self correct by how many touches there are, and I write that down. After an ankle sprain, someone might have eight or 10 touches to correct on their bad ankle, and their good ankle is oftentimes right. nothing. Uh, so you want to make sure both sides are equal when you do this, whether you had an injury or not. And if there's one that's obviously weaker or you're wobbling all over, you need to work on your ankle strength. Um, uh, we're not going to go through the... the Ankle strength and probably arch strength. Yeah. Because, again, right. I, my ankles are strong. My arch is weak. Sure. And, and that's why I'm going wobbly, wobbly. And so, we just did a video on that arch. Yeah, we just did. That yeah. was with plantar fasciitis because yeah. all this fits together. It's yeah, all the same foot. We just did foot, a video on you know? strength in the arch, yep. strength in the foot. So those are your four tests. You need to pass them to be a four-foot runner. And... and not saying you can't four foot run, you just need to stretch out, get a little bit stronger, work on your balance, and you're going to be much more success successful in your transition. Wow. Booyah. Booyah. All right. Thanks for watching. Say no more, Bob. <laughs>